Bill C-575, the First Nations Financial Transparency Act, the push for transparency on Aboriginal reserves, getting another reading this week. To have consolidated financial statements, including salaries and expenses posted online, for band members to access them anonymously, to investigate for themselves whether their leadership is using community money properly. Hopefully, a reprieve for those who live in Attawapiskat style living conditions amidst fraud, millions of dollars in uncollected rent, and numerous occasions where employees have taken cash advances without repaying the money. Well, our next guest blew the whistle on what was happening in her own community. Phyllis Sutherland, band member from the Pegwis First Nation here in Manitoba, where the chief was found to be earning $220,000 tax-free as the community was suffering from poor living conditions. With her is Colin Craig from the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, who has worked tirelessly on this file in a never-ending war on waste. Colin, Phyllis, welcome back. Thank you. First of all, Phyllis, let me just ask you a question that we're always probing here at the Sun News Network. Do you feel that the mainstream media has given this crucial story, this very important story about accountability and so much more. Do you think the mainstream media has given it its proper due? Yes, I think it has, and it's helping. Uh, between going to Ottawa and coming home last week, uh, Chief and Council had posted our ear and audit online, so it's helping. So it's Colin, this, this would be one example then, one, one, one very important example among many, because this is, when, when, it, when it comes to Aboriginal issues, mm -hmm. this is not one that has been front and center in mainstream media for many years. Yeah, I mean, it's the type of story that pops up every once in a while, right? I mean, this has been going on for decades, but I think what's changed is that, you know, we've had a real concerted effort to help expose cases like the one that Phil's brought to our attention, as well as other communities. So I think finally we've got to this tipping point where politicians in Ottawa are not only willing to talk about it, they're voting in favor of legislation to do something about it. So I think we've really turned a corner in terms of uh, this issue. So the data points just hit a critical mass. And because of people like Phyllis, who are seen as authentic, they're not seen as advocates on the right and all the rest of it, and they're not seen as people with an agenda, the mainstream just couldn't help but do the story. I think that's exactly it. I mean, it doesn't matter where you are on the media spectrum. Uh, you go online and you look at the comments, and the public is furious about what's going on. Because when people pay their taxes, they're not paying it for a chief to live high on the hog. They're paying it to help the grassroots. And, and ultimately, what we're pushing for is transparency. I mean, it's the a basic thing in a democracy is to know how much your elected officials are making. Phyllis, is it just about the chief, or is that uh, what really makes the, the story fly? I mean, mo most people have an impression uh, that as far as the reserve uh, system it goes, uh, one of the things about it that really, really bothers people is that it's not just a chief, but it's usually a chief and friends of the chief uh, who are band counselors, and they're running things. They're the elite, and then everyone else just has to go along to get along. You tell me, what, what's your case? That's exactly what happens on a reserve. Uh, if you're in the elite group, uh, you're well taken care of. And if you're not, you're, uh, you face uh, everyday struggles, threats, uh, your family's targeted, uh, you, lose, you lose jobs, you lose funding, uh, you're not given special needs, you're moved to the bottom of the housing list. So in, in the rest of Canada, we take democracy, unfortunately, for granted. We had some by-elections yesterday, one in, in Calgary, where three out of four eligible voters didn't even participate. Why do people take democracy for granted? Because overall, it works for them. Overall, they're contented. But democracy doesn't exist on a reserve. No, it doesn't. And I've uh, been saying for a while, and also in talking to people when I was down in Ottawa, there needs to be a special group set up, uh, if you will, opposition on a reserve that would hold the leaders uh, accountable and be a recognized group. And also given protection of the threats that happen if you oppose. Who does protect you? I mean, if, if it isn't members of your own family, I mean, is there any kind of uh, police force on reserve that you could actually go to if you, uh, if, if you get a, a specific threat? No. You have to have direct proof. And if you're in a band meeting trying to speak and you're threatened, the security is usually there to protect the chief and his group. And uh, the protection is just not there for the ordinary band members that need it. 
in so, most cases, for, for, they're so, the, so the out. chief is the chief is the one of the, the let's just call it the elites. They're the ones who always feel threatened if someone like you challenges them. So when it comes to security, security goes uh, to the people who pay for the security. That's right. That's right. And they're the ones who then they're the ones who dole out the checks That's to the security. Right. So they've got all the power. That's right. Colin, I'm glad that we've got transparency in salaries, but it just seems to me that's that's the tip of the iceberg as far as what the Phyllises are enduring. Yeah, and, and to be clear, I mean the story that Phyllis has told, um, it, it's not unique. We've heard that same story from many other communities. Now there are lots of chiefs out there that are, are trying their best to be transparent and accountable, and that that type of activity isn't happening. But we have heard a number of cases. So for your your viewers, I mean, they should know that this isn't one isolated case. Um, I, I think this legislation, it's not going to solve all the problems in these communities. No one has ever suggested that. But once you start to put this information online so that people can know how much their chief and counselor are making, so that they can know what the budget is, where the money is going, then they can know more about what exactly is happening and they can have another tool to hold their leaders accountable. It's the same tool that you and I have off reserve and many others have. Do you have a dream about uh, where the reserve system is going? There are some people in this country who have a dream that, that someday there won't be reserves, that all people in this country will be equals. I know that sounds naive to some people, but that, that's what some people dream about. What do you dream about? I dream about a community that's united and all working for the same goal, whether it's uh, to change the the whole system of uh, the government controlling everything where uh, reserves can take on their own governance and have a system that's run properly. Phyllis Sutherland, thanks very much. Colin, thank you. Thanks, Charles. Thanks very much. Colin Craig and Phyllis Sutherland.